Before the break, we heard about Governor Walls taking part in day two this week in the Health Department's daily COVID-19 briefing conference call. It started today with three Minnesotans who have been touched by the virus, their own personal stories. The governor hoping, hoping that by personalizing it, more people will focus on the dangers and not the partisanship. Those personal stories are much like the one Shan Carrot of Austin shared with me this past spring. She and her family got COVID-19 just before Easter, but only she and her grown daughter were hospitalized. Shan ended up in the ICU and almost died. She spent eight days unconscious. Her family could not be with her, of course, and every day her husband and her boys waited and prayed for news, hoping that she would pull through. The doctors called my husband at 2 o'clock in the morning, and they said, we need you to... Um, sign this consent form. We we just came out with an experimental drug, remdesivir, and we want to put your wife on it. That's so that's when he knew it was bad. That's when he knew it was bad. That was from my interview back in May. With still so much unknown about lasting and long-term effects from the virus, I reached out to Shan today to talk uh, after the governor spoke to see how she is doing and talk about the concerns that as you'll hear, still frighten her and her family with this virus. So I'm very happy to reconnect with Shan Carrot, who I can now call a friend. Back when I interviewed <laughs> you toward the end of spring, Shan, we were strangers and since then yeah. have gotten to know each other over these months. Um, the mm -hmm. governor using his personal stories from uh, people in the medical profession to a former lawmaker, th that all came out today. And that's why I wanted to reconnect with you, using these personal stories mm -hmm. of people who have been through COVID-19 to really uh, bring this virus into our homes for those of us who haven't experienced it. So tell me where things are at in your life in the past, what, five months since we've chatted and kind of how you're doing. I know, and it seems like, it just seems like yesterday, really. But time has gone by a little bit. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling much better. There definitely is some lingering side effects. And um, I'm not still 100%, I guess you might say. Um, but I'm just so happy to be here <laughs> and being able to talk with you. And, you know, being able to, like I said, be here and be with my family and my friends. Um, there was that but one, yes, there was, there there's was definitely lingering. Yeah, side and, and there was at one point, uh, re-listening to the interview and the sound that we used right before um, our conversation right now, talking about at the time back in April, when you got so mm -hmm. terribly sick, the mm -hmm. use of remdesivir was experimental at the time. That plus prayer, you credit to saving your life. Uh, oh. Really? Yeah. Yes. And your husband's fear, we talked a little bit about it when we had our first interview, but mm -hmm. tell me a little bit more about how, what your husband kind of went through. I know he was a little leery to come on and do an interview with me back then. He was. And you know what? It took my husband and my kids a few weeks to tell me what was really happening and what was going on. They didn't want to talk about it. I didn't know what was going on because obviously I was, you know, sleeping for those eight days and I was incoherent. I mean, I had no idea what was happening. And I kept asking them, you know, what, you know, what happened? What, what did you guys do? And the phone calls that they got from the doctors twice a day. Um, it was really hard for them to talk about it. They didn't want to relive it again, mm -hmm. you know, and talk, you know, talk about it. But they were very concern and my husband he did say that um you know every night he went to bed and he he prayed and so did my kids and and he cried and he said it, he was scared um because there was those last couple of days that the doctors did so you know they were they were optimistic but they they said it wasn't it wasn't good the, the governor really wants to take the politics out of this because you can tell he has mm -hmm. gotten quite a bit of pushback for any of the movements that he has has made. Uh, some people saying it is such a government overreach to mandate masks. It 
is un unconstitutional, others are saying, to mandate something like that. And now as we head into the holidays, people are having a real hard time with the government saying you can only have so many people in your house. So he's using personal stories. Tell me, since you've been through this, um, the politics of it, does that frustrate you? Back when I got it, there was no mandate. There was no mask. There was no social distancing. And I, I got it. My whole family did. I was hospitalized. You know, I was on a ventilator. My daughter was hospitalized for six days. I mean, it was, it was real and it's real now. Um, yeah, you, I truly believe in you have to wear a mask and you have to social distance to just for the safety of yourself and others. Um, I don't want to have anybody carrying it and then coming in, you know, not knowing that they have it and then they could possibly, you know, be, they will infect their family or someone and not know it without, you know, wearing a mask or social distancing. Jan, I've got more I want to chat with you about. Let me take a quick break, and on the other side of this break, we'll come back. And uh, if you have any advice for anyone, what you would say, uh, especially since your whole family got it, you and your daughter were the only ones to end up in the hospital, you almost lost your life, uh, there's a lot that people can benefit from from you. Again, I'm speaking with Shan Carrot in Albert Lee. She lives in Austin, but is working at her daughter's shop in Albert Lee today. And we interviewed Shan uh, back toward the end of spring. Shan got very, very sick uh, and came out of uh, an unconscious state, having been in the intensive care unit. Your husband thought you were going to die, Shan. This was right around Easter time. If you were to give people advice, uh, you're the first person. I, I remember you were the first person I had talked to who had the virus. And I told other people, I'm like, well, you got to hear what this woman has to say. Because at that time, it was still relatively new. Advice that you would have for people where the coronavirus hasn't personally touched them. And that's just it. If it hasn't personally touched you in some way or form, I don't think people really take it as seriously until it actually affects it affects you. My advice would be, yes, I mean, I don't like wearing the mask all the time either. And, and I'm working, you know, six, seven hours a day with it on. Is it uncomfortable? Sometimes, yeah. Um, but what's more uncomfortable is the ventilator, I mean, firsthand, yeah. you don't want to ever, yes, you, you know, wear the mask to, you know, save other, or it's helping you. So in case you're spreading it um, or you're saving yourself, you're preventing it. Um, I, I always say that I tell my kids, you have to wear your mask. You have to social distance and you have to wash your hands. It's that simple. It's just three st simple steps. Um, we need to, we just we need to do it because obviously the numbers are showing that we're not doing that do you worry about getting reinfected remember back when we first spoke we didn't know if people could get reinfected or not it was highly unlikely and now we've heard over the last couple of months some people have do you worry about that oh absolutely every day and it's getting now the fear is really setting in because of the numbers and the governor coming on and and saying you know what is happening i mean i think I haven't, I didn't listen to him today, but I'm pretty sure that um, St. Mary's Hospital Mayo is the beds. I probably are all 100% full by now. That scares me. So I'm thinking, you know, if somebody were to get it in my family, my relatives, my friends, is there going to be room in the hospital in case they are, you know, really bad like I did? And it happens quickly. It just doesn't you know, it comes on and it hits you. Tell me about um, some of the lingering uh, effects that you still face because of having the coronavirus back in the spring. Um, you know, it's, it's really hard. It's frustrating because I still have that shortness of breath. Um, you know, I can't do the simple task of like running up. We have two flight. We live in a two story house. I run up the stairs and come back down. And I literally brings me down to my knees and I have to sit there and kind of catch my breath. And I'm like, oh, this is just, that's not like me. I'm usually go, 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 go. Um, I get winded really easy. Um, I did have the hair falling out. I didn't tell anybody. And then I just mentioned it to my daughter and I'm like, you know what? 
I have my hair is falling out. And then she looked at me and she said, so is mine, mom. And so that was one of the side effects too. Um, I, you know, the hair loss, mm -hmm. it's better now. I mean, we took some, um, biotin hair, hair stuff to put in your hair. <laughs> when you hear <laughs> that part, that part one of, but, yeah, but speaking of that, uh, just yesterday I did an interview about melatonin and that oh. could possibly be something that helps prevent, uh, we know vitamin D helps, aspirin, another study says helps. Uh, when you hear some of this over-the-counter stuff, do you think, I want to go out there and at least just take it if, if, if it's going to help? And you know what I do? I take 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C, I take B12, I take D3, I take an immune support, I take a multivitamin, I, I mean, I take a lot. Mm -hmm. And do I make my family take it? Absolutely. I will take anything that will help. Especially you know, if it's like a natural type mm -hmm. of, yeah, supplement. Yeah. Oh yeah, and it's all, yeah, it's all natural, but I take, I take it all. Now, did I hear about the melatonin? Yeah. And do I take it? No. I did in the hospital, they gave it to me, but I probably, yeah. I they gave it to it. you back then, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And was it to help you sleep or was it to help with the coronavirus? Well, it was probably to help me sleep. <laughs> I had a hard time. I had a hard time in the hospital. <laughs> and that's another thing too. People don't, I mean, you can't have your loved ones next to you. Nobody was there. I, I know. Couldn't. I mean, thank goodness for my family that would FaceTime me. Um, I FaceTimed multiple times a day with my family members. So that did help. But, you know, it's just the little things that people don't realize or what you've been through. Um, and like I said, my poor husband and my, and my boys and my daughter, I mean, I can't imagine what they were going through wondering. In fact, my son did comment. He said, mom, I just, I hated to go to bed at night because I didn't want to, you know, I was, I was for fear of getting a phone call in the middle of the night. And he said, and I didn't want to get up in the morning for afraid of what dad found out from the doctor. It's harder now because I watch the news and I watch TV and um, they show the emergency rooms and the hospital beds with, you know, the people that are in ventilators. Yeah. And I do, and that whole thing comes back, and that, and it, and I, and I do cry, yeah. and then I have to turn the channel, and yeah, I'm scared. Um, I'm gonna get <laughs> choked up, but it, it brings back, um, yeah, it brings back everything, and I want every, and I want that to go away. I don't want, I don't want to remember that. I want COVID to go away. The last part of our interview. Um, we were done officially conducting the interview, and that was just Shan and I sharing and, and having a little bit more of a conversation. She still lives with a lot of fear about it, and a lot of people don't want to live in fear. I get that. Neither do I. Uh, the reality is that it is still very serious and very dangerous.